This is the Galaxy S24 I bought from Canada in onyx black and this is the Galaxy S24 I bought from Germany in marble gray. Apart from the color, they should be the same, right? That's not the case. This year, Samsung put an in-house Exynos 2400 as a chipset on the global version and Snapdragon on North America and selected markets. Today I will do a through battery test, performance test, benchmarking and gaming and will test the cameras of the phones. The result will surprise you. Or it doesn't. Now that both phones are fresh, let's start benchmarking. First, I will run a Geekbench CPU test. For those of you who know me, I am Mo and I'm a scientist. I did my doctoral degree in computer science and do lots of A-B testing. Since these two phones are the same, and I made sure all the other elements such as room temperature, setting, brightness level, and network connections are also the same, the only variable is the chipset of these two phones. Both phones are new, Exynos is three weeks old, and Snapdragon is one week, and the batteries are calibrated. So the first result is out. The Exynos gets lower results on every single benchmark on the CPU test. It got 3 degrees hotter and also used 1% more battery. So not a great start for Exynos. Single core performance is 10% in favor of a Snapdragon and in multi-core a Snapdragon is 6% higher. Now I'm going to run the GPU OpenCL test. The GPU result is out and in GPU performance, Snapdragon did better in every single aspect except for face detection and feature matching. It got a 10% higher score in total. The Exynos again ran a couple of degrees hotter and we let them cool down and we run the 3D Mark Extreme Stress Test. I like the 3D Mark test because it runs for 20 minutes and tests the chipset under continuous heavy load. In the middle of the test, Exynos got hot and the screen got dim. From my experience, when the phone runs hotter than 45 degrees Celsius, which is 113 Fahrenheit, it deems the screen. Something that happens a lot when I'm testing Exynos. The result is also in favor of a Snapdragon. Exynos had three major drops, but Snapdragon only had one. Snapdragon used 1% less battery and ran 2 degrees lower. You may see different results when running the same benchmark. For example, here I got a 1400 score the last time I ran this benchmark. But now that the phone is hot, I run it again and the result is around 700. The important thing to note is, it doesn't matter what absolute benchmark value is, since both phones have the same conditions, we can just compare the results relative to each other. So in conclusion, in all benchmarks that are run, a Snapdragon 8 Generation 3 is doing better than Exynos. Also, it runs cooler. Now S24 a Snapdragon is 84%, while the S24 Exynos is 82%. Let's move on to the next test which is running YouTube Shorts on Wi-Fi and 5G. I also run some 4K videos on Wi-Fi. The whole test will take us around half an hour. My experience with Exynos shows it doesn't struggle with light loads such as browsing the web or watching YouTube or browsing Instagram. And by the way, the watch I'm using to track time is a various watch called TicWatch. The battery is massive and I love it. I will link it in the description down below since it is on sale on Amazon. Both phones use the same amount of battery and the temperature is the same. That's good news for Exynos. Thanks for watching this far into the video. This little experience cost me a fortune. I also had to pay taxes when importing the phone from Canada. If you want to support the channel so I can run such an experiment again, please consider subscribing and liking the video. Thank you in advance. For the next test, I decided to run a 4K 60 frames per second front-facing camera test. But the camera stopped working in the middle of it for Exynos. This is the second time during test that an S24 Exynos camera stops to work. So it is not an accident anymore. Fortunately, I realized it on time and restarted the test. Now Snapdragon is 75 while Exynos is at 72. Then I ran a video through Adobe Rush. 
I don't know why, but for some reasons the screen turned blue during export on Adobe Rush for Exynos. I experienced this bug on S24 Plus 2. At the end of the test, Exynos was 1% more behind. Since it is a real life test, I decided to go for an hour walk and I will track my activity using a Strava and Adidas running. I will also take lots of pictures. So I'm back and the difference between the battery percentages got even larger. Now Snapdragon is 7% ahead. When I went for a walk, I also did test the camera. It is known that previous version of Galaxy phones would have different results on Exynos versus a Snapdragon. And this time, it is the same old story. I didn't find any difference on the normal lens, but the white balance on Exynos on telephoto is completely off. I also had a similar observation when I was comparing S23 and S24 cameras. For example, in this picture, you see that both phones capture the colors as deep blue and sky blue on the main lens. But in the telephoto lens, Exynos captured it as a purple and also the green color is completely off. I did take a few other pictures and in general, it seems there's a tint to that white balance on the telephoto lens on the Exynos version, which doesn't make it very accurate. While I was doing some course around the house, I played more YouTube shorts because why not? For the next test, I wanted to see how much battery the phone use if I put them in a washing machine to get a crappy 5G signal. But to my surprise, Exynos just froze after a minute into the test and I had to restart the phone. I also noticed Exynos signal is often worse than the Snapdragon's. For example, in this case, it was running on LTE while the Snapdragon was getting 5G. I ran the same Google Meet test on my desk. Both phones are now talking to each other. I used 5G for half an hour and Wi-Fi for another half. Now the result is 45 to 37 in favor of a Snapdragon and we didn't even start gaming yet. I didn't give up on my washing machine experiment because I have a joke prepared for it. So I decided to put both phones into the washing machine for a standby test. You may say, but Mo, I'm not gonna get into a washing machine. I would say, you may not, but we have a lot of video and evidence that people get stuck in washing machines often and they want to use their phones inside it. But on a serious note, I'm running this test because it shows the battery drain having a crappy signal. Neither phones showed any advantage in terms of battery life by the end of this test. Next I played PUBG Mobile on max setting and 60 frames per second. After the loading screen, Exxon's already got 2 degrees hotter. 10 minutes into the game, Exynos was running 43 degrees Celsius, which is 109 Fahrenheit, and Snapdragon was running 39 degrees Celsius, which is 102 degrees Fahrenheit. That's not alarming yet. After 40 minutes, Exynos got to 45 degrees Celsius, which is 113 Fahrenheit, and the screen got dim. So in a way, it was cheating. Both games ended at the 27 minutes mark, and Exynos got to a whopping 51 degrees Celsius, which is 123 Fahrenheit. That's 9 whopping degrees hotter than a Snapdragon, under the similar conditions. I had a hard time even touching the screen, since my hand was literally burning. Now there is a 12% difference between the batteries. I should mention both phones ran 60 frames per second throughout the whole game. Then I used this cool feature in the Galaxy Pro camera apps, to take a picture of the sky, or in this case my desk. This way I can run the camera of the phone on a long exposure of 10 minutes. Exynos performed worse again and used 2% more battery. This one is really no excuse for Exynos, since I'm using the native Samsung app and they can't say the app is not optimized. You could just talk to your chipset department. Then just for fun, I put my heater to increase the temperature of the desk to 35 degrees, which is 95 degrees Fahrenheit. So far the result for Exynos is disappointing. A lot of people in the comment section say we should give Exynos time as it is new and needs up to a year to be optimized by app developers. As an app developer myself, I can tell you we are not sitting down waiting for a new chipset to update our libraries. This process needs lots of resources. We have lots of better things to do like, you know, watching YouTube shorts or making a YouTube video. What chipset manufacturers do is that they send their chipset before they get to the end customer in a black no-label phone in advance 
to game engine developers and companies like Google that own Android. Trust me, I got some of those before. So they pretty much had some time already to work on those updates. Also, phone release cycles are yearly. So maybe we should not use customers as beta testers? These phones cost as much as 3 months of salary in most of the developing world. Even in Germany, these phones cost half a month of an average salary. So you should wake up every day for 15 days in cold weather. So it better be a damn good phone. I stop talking now and let's see what the final result will tell us. So the test is finished. Snapdragon ended the test with 17 person left while Exynos shut down. The difference is so huge that it cannot be margin of error anymore. Let me recap what happened during the test. The Snapdragon got better benchmark results. The Exynos camera shut down during 4K video like it did last time. And the Exynos froze during a bad signal 5G Google Meet test. On top of that, it finished the test with 17 person less battery and the cherry on top is that the white colors on the camera on telephoto lens are just not right. Lots of people ask me, Mo, would you recommend the Exynos version to me? You know, the thing is, I'm a battery nerd. My current phone is Xperia 5 Mark V, which has the best battery in compact devices. And my watches are Garmin 945 and my new watch, Mobvoi Tick Watch, which both last a week. Life is too short to worry about not having enough juice at the end of the day. On top of that, if I were living in a tropical area, I would worry about using this phone because it is running hot. You know, the funny thing that I noticed is that when I was purchasing these two phones, one in Amazon.de and the other in Amazon.ca, there were no mention at all about what chipset Samsung used in Amazon.de website. In the Amazon.ca, they wrote in bold that they used the best and the latest chipsets out there. Marketing departments never say no to a marketing opportunity. So if a Snapdragon was really worse than Exynos, or even if Exynos was the same as the Snapdragon, the Samsung marketing team would use this opportunity to market their product better. I feel a bit disappointed as a long-term Samsung customer, because even though they saved around $200 per device, by not paying Qualcomm, they are selling it as full price to end customers in all over the world. If you already have this phone, please don't be sad. Maybe some updates will solve some of the issues because at this point, I cannot tell whether it is software or hardware problem. Also, if you use your phone on Wi-Fi most of the time and you don't game on it, you are gonna be fine. Maybe just turn on the battery saving mode. Also, shout out to my friend from Canada for sending me the Snapdragon and also to my Austrian friend to buy Exynos version for me. With friends like that, you don't need anything else in life. If you enjoyed this video, you are gonna also enjoy the next comparison that is popping up right now on your screen. Thanks for watching the video and tuning into Tecmo. And until the next one, bye.